What's up, you beautiful bastards? Hope you have a fantastic Tuesday. Welcome back to the Philip DeFranco Show, and let's just jump into it. And the first thing I want to talk about today is a story I really could not have predicted, and that is the ACLU is going head-to-head with Taylor Swift. So what the hell happened? Well, in September, a site called Popfront posted an article titled Swiftly to the Alt-Right, Taylor subtly gets the lowercase KKK in formation. The blog post was written by Megan Herning, the site's executive editor. Herning's post claimed that Swift had used language and symbolism of the alt-right movement in her music and says that her public persona is based on the narrative of white victimhood, specifically referencing her feud with Kanye West. Herning also criticized Swift for not endorsing a candidate in the 2016 election. She also compares Swift to Adolf Hitler, accuses her of quietly supporting racism, and called her lyrics, quote, dog whistles to white supremacy. The post also analyzes the song, Look What You Made Me Do, arguing that the lyrics serve as defense of white anger, also saying that Swift is becoming a white supremacist icon. And finally, it suggests that Swift's silence on these topics are calculated, adding if that were not true, then she, quote, needs to state her beliefs out loud for the world. So after the post was published, Swift's lawyer sent a letter demanding that the website immediately issue a retraction and remove the post, calling the post provably false and defamatory. The letter also saying Swift was prepared to proceed with litigation if the story wasn't retracted, stating the story is replete with demonstrable and offensive falsehoods which bear no relation to reality or the truth about Miss Swift. It appears to be a malicious attack against Miss Swift that goes to great lengths to portray Miss Swift as some sort of white supremacist figurehead, which is a baseless fiction masquerading as fact and completely misrepresents Miss Swift. Pop Front is substantially liable to Miss Swift for defamation. Swift's lawyer also writing that Swift unequivocally denounces white supremacy and the alt-right. Swift's lawyer is also writing that their letter was not authorized for publication, but obviously we are talking about it today, and that's because the ACLU, which is now representing Herning, published a letter online calling it a, quote, completely unsupported attempt to suppress constitutionally protected speech. The ACLU issuing its own letter to Swift's team defending the post, saying it is, quote, a mix of core political speech and critical commentary. It discusses current politics in this country, the recent rise of white supremacy, and the fact that some white supremacists have apparently embraced Miss Swift, along with a critical interpretation of some of Miss Swift's music, lyrics, and videos. The ACLU also calling it ironic that Swift's attorneys said that the letter stands as another unequivocal denouncement by Miss Swift of white supremacy in the alt-right, but then also forbid anyone from making the letter public. They also told the lawyers that criticism is unpleasant, but that celebrities like Swift must learn to, quote, shake it off. Oh, I love that. In 2017, everyone, including the ACLU, snarky and petty. The ACLU also requesting a response from Swift's team on whether or not they intend to proceed with litigation by November 13th. Now here's what I'll say. Do I think that Taylor Swift is an undercover Hitler? No. Do I think that her song lyrics are geared towards the alt-right and that she's actually talking about white anger? No. Do I think her career is based on white victimhood? No. I mean, granted, some victimhood. Breakups, bad boyfriends, the Kanye stuff, and then we bounce back. Also, the idea that Taylor Swift is a bad person because she's not telling people who to vote for in the election, that's so stupid. You know, that mindset that we heard so much of, if you don't vote for Hillary, then you're part of the problem. So many people don't realize today, so many people, especially Hollywood types, famous types, saying this is who you should vote for. All it did was alienate people's bases and charge up the Trump voters. And for the most part, the article just seems like seeing what you want to see out of something. And with all of that said, I still think that people should be allowed to have their incredibly stupid opinion. The article makes huge leaps, no doubt, but I feel like Swift's legal team is going to have a problem here. Essentially, for Taylor Swift's lawyers to win here, it appears that they would have to be able to successfully argue and prove that the blogger made the statements with actual malice. And historically, that has been very hard to prove. And so I, who am not a lawyer, feel like I don't need to say that, but just so there is no confusion. I think the story will most likely go away soon. I mean, we've seen in the past celebrities and their teams using cease and desist to kind of just suppress negative stories. And what's kind of funny about that is while the intent might be to suppress a story, if someone then makes that move public, you you take the the story that I had never heard of before, and now it's in front of so many more people. But with all of that said, I do want to pass the question off to you. What is your personal takeaway? Who's right? Who's wrong? Is it a more gray situation? Who's more right? Who's more wrong? I'd love to know your thoughts. But from that, I want to share some stuff I love today. And today, and awesome, brought to you by Squarespace. Squarespace, of course, a fantastic place to make a beautiful professional website with their easy and intuitive all-in-one platform. I'm talking about there's nothing to install, patch, or upgrade ever. So if you want to make the smart move like many from the nation already have, go to squarespace.com slash phil, start your free trial, and if you really like it, use coupon code phil for 10% off your first purchase. And the first bit of awesome I wanted to share was the amazing Rick and Morty remix by Leslie Way. It somehow, as of recording this video, only has 5,000 views. That is a travesty. Then we got a fantastic and interesting video from NerdWriter1. Putting out the video, when did time travel come from. Overwatch put out a fantastic short called Honor and Glory. I mean, you don't even need to play the game to enjoy it. Also in self-promo awesome, if you want to snag this shirt or you want it on a hoodie or any of these other awesome designs, you can go to shopdefranco.com, snag what you want whenever you want, no more limited supply, blah, blah, blah. And if you want to see the full versions of everything I just shared, the secret link of the day, anything at all, links as always are in the description down below. And then let's talk about what's happening with Sia. Sia, of course, is a singer, songwriter, wearer of comically huge bows, and she was in the news in the past day because apparently 
apparently someone was trying to sell her nudes. And we've seen more and more of these photos coming out over the past few years. Sometimes it's it's hacked nudes, sometimes it's paparazzi stalking famous people. But with this story, Sia did something a little bit different. She walked down a road far less traveled and she just released her own nudes. Last night tweeting, someone is apparently trying to sell naked photos of me to my fans. Save your money, here it is for free. Every day is Christmas. And I say good for her because what I see here is someone taking the power back. I mean, judging by the picture, most likely we're dealing with some creep with an obnoxiously big lens who's invading someone's privacy, trying to profit off a photo they took without someone's permission or knowledge. And hopefully Sia's post de-incentivizes any organization from working with this disgusting paparazzi. And I want to end this story just on a small little side note, and that is I, I'm extremely bothered by the number of comments I see from people when they say, well, if you're a famous person, this is kind of what you signed up for. And my response to that is no, that's, it, it's, that's such a disconnected and disgusting mindset. That because someone is famous, because they want to star in movies or sing songs in front of a crowd, that that excuses their, their rights being violated. The right to privacy, the right to have a choice if their naked body is shared with the rest of the world. I don't care if we're talking about famous people. People are people. I, it, it seems like it's common sense, but apparently common sense has been dead a long time. And then let's try out a new little segment I call Hater of the Day. And our Hater of the Day is a woman by the name of Jan Shedd. Jan recently went viral when she posted about how she wasn't happy with her local news. She posted this photo of Demetria Obelar with the caption, has anyone seen Channel 8's new morning traffic reporter? Her name is Demetria Obelor and she's a size 16, 18 woman in a size six dress and she looks ridiculous. I understand that when I watch Channel 8, I'm going to get biased reporting and political correctness, but clearly they have taken complete leave of their senses. I'm not going to watch Channel 8 anymore. And I imagine as she hit that little blue post button, she thought to herself, that's right world, I am a hero. I matter and I've made a difference today. Now the thing is, this post did make a big impact, but it was most people saying that Jan's the worst. And oddly enough, one of those was even Chance the Rapper. But yes, the main reaction were people coming to Demetria's defense. You also had some people saying that they believed race played a role in Jan's outburst. To that, Jan later wrote that she was being attacked by the racist mafia. Also writing, frankly, I didn't even notice that she was black. I was shocked that Channel 8 would put someone on the air dressed so provocatively. Really, Jan? You didn't notice Demetria was black? That's one of the things I hate the most when people say things like, I don't see color. The only time that's not one of the most obnoxiously stupid things to say is if you are legally colorblind. Don't say you don't notice race or color, just say that what you're saying isn't being based on it. It's not that hard, and including frankly or honestly before the statement does not make it more true. Now since the post and the big reaction, Dimitri responded online. The controversy is coming from people who aren't too happy with the way that I look on television, saying, oh, her body is too big for that dress, or she's too curvy, or her hair is unprofessional, it's crazy, we don't like it. A quick word to those people. This is the way that I'm built. This is the way that I was born. I'm not going anywhere. So if you don't like it, you have your options. And ultimately where I land on this is just don't be a Jan. The woman on woman jealous hate here is strong with you, Jan. Jan, when you and other women like you look to Demetria, who, I mean, if we're being honest here, is drop dead gorgeous. And it makes you feel those negative things about yourself. Rather than just lashing out on Facebook, do something to better yourself. Mentally or physically, whatever makes tomorrow less painful for you to live. And that's actually a message I think that goes way past the specificity of this story. If, if something makes you feel bad, I feel like we could all benefit from not spending energy on trying to tear others down and focus on ourselves. How dare she wear something that makes her feel comfortable and confident. Don't be a hater be a creator. And then let's talk about an update around the Texas church shooting. We talked about it yesterday, a horrific attack at a church that left 26 dead in Sutherland Springs, Texas. Well, new information has come out explaining how the shooter got those weapons. Yesterday, we mentioned the Texas shooter was court-martialed in 2012. He received a bad conduct discharge, which involved a year of confinement in a military prison and was reduced to the lowest rank in the Air Force, this for assaulting his wife and stepson. According to records released by the Air Force, he was originally charged with assault and battery against his wife, aggravated assault against his stepson, four charges involving involving firearms, this including two charges of pointing a loaded firearm at his wife, and those firearms charges were dropped prior to a trial as a result of a plea agreement. But he did still plead guilty to assault against a child and assault against his wife. This reportedly involved him striking his stepson in the head, fracturing his skull with, quote, force likely to produce death or grievous bodily harm. He also reportedly struck his wife with his hands, kicking her, choking and pulling her hair. And so of course, when that news came out, people said, how did this guy still get a gun? Citing federal law that states, it shall be unlawful for 
for any person to sell or otherwise dispose of any firearm or ammunition to any person knowing that the individual has been convicted in any court of a misdemeanor crime of domestic violence. So what happened? Academy Sports has confirmed they sold two weapons to the Texas shooter in the past two years. How could that have happened? Well, the Air Force has since said that it failed to alert federal authorities to the shooter's domestic violence conviction, the thing that would have prevented him from legally purchasing the firearm he used to massacre 26 people. According to the Air Force, initial information indicates that the shooter's domestic violence offense was not entered into the National Criminal Information Center database by the Holloman Air Force Base Office of Special Investigation. The National Instant Criminal Background Check System, the NICS database, is an FBI-run government agency responsible for, quote, saving lives and protecting people from harm by not letting guns fall into the wrong hands. But the information was never entered, so according to Academy Sports, both sales were approved by the NICS. The Air Force went on to say in their statement, the service will also conduct a comprehensive review of Air Force databases to ensure records and other cases have been reported correctly. The Air Force has also requested that the Department of Defense Inspector General review records and procedures across the Department of Defense. We've also seen Democratic lawmakers calling for the Department of Defense to investigate. New York Senator Kirsten Gillibrand tweeting, no excuse for this. I'm calling on the Department of Defense to audit old case files to prevent this deadly error from happening again. Adding in a statement, learning that this senseless act of violence might have been prevented if only the proper form was filled out by military investigators was absolutely devastating. Connecticut Senator Richard Blumenthal tweeting, as a member of Judiciary and Armed Services Committees, I call on the DOD, DOJ to provide clear picture of where, why, and how this process failed. And in response to all of this, Mattis said today that he had directed the Pentagon's Inspector General to investigate further, saying if the problem is that we didn't put something out, we'll correct that. There's at least an indication in what I've read in the press and what I'm getting through other elements of the government, not the Department of Defense, that the direction is out there. I've got to make sure. And this morning we also heard from Air Force Secretary Heather Wilson. We have initiated a review in the Air Force to find out why his fingerprint records were not transmitted to the database. And we'll find out why. We are checking all of the Air Force databases, and there are several of them, to find out and confirm that all court-martial convictions for these kinds of offenses have been reported in the civilian database. Right. And we've taken responsibility, and we're, we're going to find out what happened and fix it. And coming out of this story, my main reaction is, I didn't think this story could get more depressing, but wow, it did. If all of this is true, and it appears to be true, the investigation mainly seems to be on the how part. We're talking about a mass murder that involved a victim as young as 18 months. And it was done with a weapon that was sold by a legal above the board retailer that was trying to follow all the rules because the right paperwork wasn't filed. Plainly put, the system failed all those people. That is truly devastating. Now, obviously the pro-gun, anti-gun people are still going to debate over if it had been filed properly, would he still have been able to get a weapon? If not a retail store than maybe a private seller that doesn't do enough background work. But I think that would just be speculation here and that's not really helpful. But that said, I would also love to know what you think about this story. Hearing this update, this news, what, how do you feel? What are you, what are you thinking? Is, is it changing what you were thinking before? I'd love to know your thoughts on this and or really anything else I talked about today in those comments down below. And that's where I'm going to end today's show. And remember, if you liked this video, you like what I try and do on this channel, hit that like button. If you're new here, hit that subscribe button. That way you can make sure you don't miss these daily videos, which actually, if you did miss yesterday's show, you want to catch up, click or tap right there to watch that. Or if you want to see the newest behind the scenes vlog, click or tap right there to watch that. But that's it, of course, as always, my name's Philip DeFranco. You've just been filled in. I love yo faces and I'll see you tomorrow.